your time will come. Hey everybody, welcome back to LEGO Races with me, TomTom94, and today I promise we're going to get into time races. Time races are essentially the time trial mode of LEGO Races. You have to get... Well, let's, ju let's jump in and show you. That is Veronica Voltage. There is a Veronica Voltage ghost for each of the time race tracks. And you have to beat her best time overall. First thing that becomes apparent, the power-ups are in strange locations. Yes, they move all the power-up locations. And the only power-ups you're going to get are power-ups that can open shortcuts and turbo boosts. And I've just missed the power-up that can open this shortcut. Now, one key difference between... Veronica Voltage and other AI racers. Veronica Voltage can, although she didn't on that lap, she can use shortcuts because she's based on human data. This is a really critical distinction because it doesn't because it's the only time the AI, the AI of sorts will use shortcuts. Now we are actually in the lead at this point. But I didn't do very well in that last lap. I didn't get the shortcut open and I didn't get many white bricks either. So I'd like to correct that, but I'm not gonna get the white bricks, I'm just gonna open the shortcut this lap. They're usually only enough white bricks per lap for you to get a uh, warp turbo. It's deliberately designed so that you can't just warp your way around the lap, lap like you can in the main races. There are a couple of exceptions on some of the longer tracks, but mostly that's the rule that they stick to. Now, Veronica Voltage tends to vary in difficulty. On tracks like this, she's fairly passable. I mean, I've not really done an awful lot. I haven't really had a single warp, and I've only opened up and used the shortcut once, but I'm still a good 5, 6, 7 seconds in front of her. On other tracks, then, she, though she is a real pain in the posterior, because her time is very close. The top tracks that she's difficult on, Nightmare Thorn, and Pirate Skull Pass. That's, those are the top ones. And for some reason, Ice Planet Pathway is really hard as well. But anyway, we have beaten Veronica Voltage. We have the ability to race again if we fancy beating our best time. You'll see, best lap time and best total time. And it will say time trial one. Now, time races only apply to the first three circuits. I, u I could have sworn there used to be one for Rocket Race Run as well. But apparently there isn't and my memory is faulty. You, if, and if you beat Veronica Voltage on all 12 time trials, then you unlock her car set. There is a bonus car set for Veronica Voltage. So, I'm going to now do that, and I'm going to speed it up, and probably put some music over it, or maybe post-commentate. I apologise for doing that, but you don't really want to sit here and watch me just do time trials for half an hour, because it will get boring. So that's what I'm going to do. And next time, I promise we will finally take down... Indiana Jones on the title screen. So anyway, cue the music. Hey guys, so I just want to add a couple more tips to what I've already said already about time trials, time races. The big tip I want to point out is one that's not quite immediately apparent. Veronica Voltage has an advantage. She doesn't slow down when she goes off road. Now, this only matters on a handful of tracks, but the handful of tracks it does matter on, it makes life a hell of a lot harder for you in them. The main one you'll notice it on is Pirate Skull Pass, where the off-road bits sort of fringe on the track and you have to go over them at times. But you may also notice it on Desert Adventure Dragway, where she can literally just drive over the sand. And while it's not quite the same thing, she also does it on a nice planet pathway, because the player is nowhere near as able to get traction as Veronica Voltage is. I'd like to point out this is my fourth time recording this narration because I recorded it twice and then I had recorded it a third time and the codec was so bad it was completely unlistenable. So I'm now trying to record it in a, in a you know, slightly more enthusiastic voice. Apart from that, one thing I would like to say, I think that difficulty-wise time trial is a bit weird. It spikes in difficulty around Royal Knights Raceway. The first five are really quite simple. I think I achieved all of them on my first try, with the exception of Tribal Island Trail because my recording failed, which is why there's a blue ghost. The main surprise for me was Royal Knights Raceway. I was not expecting that one to be quite so hard. It sort of snuck up on me, but it's because of where the white bricks and green bricks are. And this leads me into my absolute top tip 
four time trial races, which is get into a pattern, know where the white bricks and green bricks are, and know how to get a walk turbo. If you go, think about it as going between walk turbos every lap, then you will succeed. This is one of the issues with Royal Knights Raceway and another couple of others, is it's quite difficult to consistently get a walk turbo, and then you end up out of position and out of sync. We're going to get on to Ice Planet Pathway, and I'd just like to point one thing out about Ice Planet Pathway that I missed on the first time through, which is you can cut across that little spinny circle around the end. I did actually know this. I left it out because I didn't realise I was able to power side left. I have managed to find a workaround on the left power side issue. Ma remapping the controls to anything other than space and enter, and you will be able to do three keys at the same time. Still not clear why you can't hold up left and space at the same time, but you can hold up right and space at the same time. But I digress, that's not really important. Yeah, Ice Planet Pathway was one I really dreaded. I left that one as late as I could. It, because Veronica Walters can get perfect traction when she cuts corners, you have to be absolutely perfect with your turbo boost, and I'm just not able to do that. Night Marathon. I may have overstated this one slightly in the run-up to this. When I actually did it, it wasn't too bad. The most obnoxious bit of fake difficulty, which you should see, is when I get spat out by those broomsticks, and it does do that rather annoyingly for often. But apart from that, it's okay. It's still difficult, and it's still up there with the more difficult later tracks, but it's not as bad as I quite made it out to be. Even if I did rather fluke my win by missing that on the turbos. Pirate Skull Pass, on the other hand, Pirate Skull Pass is exactly as hard as it was because it's so unbelievably tight, and you'll notice that the pattern I get into involves me getting three white Power Plus bricks. The third of those white Power Plus bricks is sticking by a bit of wall that sticks out, and if you hit that bit of wall that juts out, then you lose, because you miss the Power Plus brick, you miss the Warp Turbo, and Veronica Voltage overtakes you by a long way. It looks, from the pattern on the minimap, like I beat her by miles, but if I'd made a single mistake, then I wouldn't have beaten her at all. Adventure Temple Trail. Adventure Temple Trail, interestingly enough, TV Trips this this is the hardest one, or it says go on, wait, we'll wait for you to beat Veronica Voltage on Adventure Temple Trail. I don't find it that bad, the simple reason is that it's very easy to get into a pattern. That's not to say I didn't take quite a few attempts, because it's very difficult to nail that pattern consistently, but because of how easy it is to get into that pattern, I don't find it terrible. Also, Veronica Voltage makes a mistake consistently, which is when she gets spat out by the warp turbo, she crashes into the barrier, as I did there. This makes it a little bit easier. Apart from that, I think that was time trial mode, really. It's probably the hardest mode in the game, to be honest, unless you were to only raise Rocket Racer. It's really quite challenging at times. On certain tracks, you have to really get it nailed spot on. So, consider that an extra challenge. And, yeah, enjoy the last little bit of music, and I'll see you in a bit. So at this point it's probably best to explain what's just happened, because uh, there was a minor fuck up. Basically, once you defeat the final time trial time for Veronica Voltage, in this case Pirate Squad Pass was mine, a cutscene will play in which she will say, congratulations for beating all my times, here is my car set. Unfortunately, my LEGO race has crashed, causing my game record to crash, which means that I've completely lost all footage of the incident. And yes, I did go and look to see if you could do it again, and it turns out you can't. So, what we'll do is we will sit, take a look, nevertheless, at Veronica Voltage's car set, complete with random clock motif. There's her actual car, the one that's given us so much bloody trouble. And there's the alternative one, that looks like a really generic Formula 1 car. If we take a look... Oh, whoops. Sorry. If we take a look, there's not really a lot to it. it got those sort of special red and yellow bricks, there's one that looks like a computer, there's some has block ones if you want to do that motif. There's a couple of there's the checkered flag flag, that's quite nice. But apart from that it's fairly small, it's fairly minor, it's just a little bonus for if you defeat all the time trials. So I reckon that's that. And having now spent quite some time, it's now 25 past 5 in the morning here in the UK, doing all those time trials, I am quite content 
to put this to bed and next time that guy in the bottom right corner is finally going to meet his match. I will see you then.